In this lecture, we introduce the idea of perfect competition. One feature of perfect competition is that individual firms face a perfectly elastic demand curve. If they try to raise their prices above the market price, they lose all their customers. So you might guess that perfect competition should help keep prices low, at least relative to other situations where there's less than perfect competition. Is this actually the case? Turns out the answer is yes, and we have a great way to observe it in the real world, pharmaceutical drugs. In the United States and most countries, if you invent a new type of drug, then you get a patent for that drug. If you own a patent for a drug, no one else besides you is allowed to sell the drug. You have a legally enforced monopoly. We call this selling a branded prescription drug. As noted in this lecture, a monopoly market is one with only one firm selling the good. It's basically the exact opposite of perfect competition. We'll learn about monopolies later in the course. But patents usually only last for 17 years by law, so you only get the monopoly during those 17 years. Once time is up, anyone else can manufacture the drug and sell it. At that point, other competitors can come in and offer generic versions of these branded drugs. Usually, the actual chemistry of the drug is easy enough to copy, so generic versions are identical to the branded versions. You can see this in action anytime you shop for a painkiller at your local pharmacy. For example, there are many kinds of ibuprofen to choose from, ranging from brands like Advil or Motrin to other versions that don't have as well-known names, but all are chemically identical. As a result, patents and pharmaceutical drugs are a great way to see perfect competition in action. The day before the patent expires, the firm has a monopoly. The day after, it's every firm for itself, and perfect competition can ensue. So if competition really helps keep prices down, we would expect to see the price for a drug drop in the years after the patent term expires. Is this the case? Absolutely. This graph shows the average number of new companies that start selling a pharmaceutical drug in the year after a patent expires. Normally between two and five new companies start selling a drug once the monopoly ends. Does this cause the price to drop? Yes, it does, just as economic theory predicts. In the first few months after patent expires, prices drop to about 60% of their pre-patent level. A year later, they're down to 40% of where they were before the patent expired. And by three years later, prices are down to only about 20% of the pre-patent price. This is competition in action. So if patents keep prices high, why do we have them? Why would the government give a drug company a monopoly if it means consumers have to pay more to stay healthy? The reason is because this encourages companies to develop new drugs. It's normally easy to copy someone else's invention and sell it but it's very costly and difficult to discover new medicine. Indeed, recent estimates suggest that the average cost of developing a new prescription drug is $2.6 billion. By giving pharmaceutical companies the right to sell new products without any competition, the government's basically giving these companies a prize for discovering a new medicine that may make us healthier. At the same time, we don't want someone who invents a drug to be able to keep prices high forever. So we limit the size of the prize by putting a cap on how long they have their monopoly. Does it always work perfectly? No. Sometimes it's hard to achieve perfect competition even after the patent expires. We'll discuss this more in a few lectures.